Green Flight Challenge is uh, where we're at today, and specifically in Sonoma County Airport in California, Napa Valley. The Green Flight Challenge is really exploring a new frontier in propulsion. That is, we've had reciprocating and turbine engines for 100 or for 70 years. What we're doing is exploring the ability of electric propulsion to dramatically improve efficiency, decrease noise, reduce operating costs, and generally make aircraft much more reliable and safe. NASA is involved in the Green Flight Challenge because we sponsored the prize. The total prize is $1.65 million, which is coming from the NASA Centennial Challenge office. NASA has a whole bunch of different Centennial Prizes, and specifically this one is to support frontiers and aviation technologies. So NASA is really interested in discovering new technologies that U.S. aerospace can then utilize to create new markets, to improve societal capabilities. So this one is specifically trying to scope out a new frontier for aviation propulsion. We have four different aircraft competing for the prizes. And two of them are electric aircraft, and two of them utilize conventional reciprocating engines. The two electric aircraft are incredibly efficient. If you were here today, for instance, you would have heard them take off. Well, you would have tried to hear them take off because they're incredibly silent. Very, very quiet compared to regular aircraft. So we're learning how we can integrate these new electric propulsion systems to have very low community noise and as well have incredibly high efficiencies. These aircraft, I'm sure at least one of them, is going to be able to showcase the ability to see the same efficiency level as a Prius, but at two to three times the speed of a Prius on the ground. This is a Lindbergh kind of moment where we're seeing the dawn of a new era in flight, a brand new technology that brings all sorts of really neat new capabilities from reliability, from safety, from efficiency, from low noise, low operating costs, just all sorts of neat things come along with electric propulsion. In terms of when this could be a practical solution, the key limiting factor, and that is electric propulsion, everything is better compared to an internal combustion engine except for one thing the batteries, and the batteries are not even close to being the same energy density as conventional hydrocarbon fuels. You know, diesel fuel, there's a lot of energy in that. Avgas, lots of energy in it. Batteries, not so much. In fact, 50 times less energy density. That means you've got to carry around 50 times more weight for the same energy content. That's the limiting factor. Everything else is better. The reason why I think over the next five to seven years you'll see this industry take off in electric flight is because there's enormous investments taking place, billions of dollars. Uh, ARPA-E is also making incredible investments to bring that up. Um, so it's really not a 50 times difference, though, when you start to factor in electric motors are three times more efficient than an internal combustion engine. So that really takes it down to about a 15 times difference. Then cooling drag is lower. The weight of electric motors is lower. So it really comes down to electric versus hydrocarbon fuels. There's really about a three to five times difference in that mass of the battery in terms of penalties. As we can get to three times the current energy state, which is 200 watt hours per kilogram, that's what batteries get. As we get to 500 or 600 watt hours per kilogram, electric propulsion is a fantastic answer that the market will embrace. And the ARPA-E investments are going exactly after that for the next five to seven years. So the question becomes, if you see batteries over the next five to 10 years reaching that break-even point, when do you start investing in understanding how this radically different propulsion technology can be used in aircraft? Because it is more different of a propulsion solution than turbine was from reciprocating engines. You have enormous degrees of freedom of how to integrate them, and the time is now to do those experiments in competitions like the Green Flight Challenge. Aero TV is brought to you by
The DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.